it's game day. And around here, every now and then, things get ratcheted up a notch. The heat gets turned up. And there's an added guest to help us prepare for the game. Here with me today is Ben Stevens from Sports Grid. We're going to talk about the big game that Ohio State has today. First round matchup with Loyola Chicago. And what we can expect from the Buckeyes in this year's NC2A tournament. All that and more right here on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes. Part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of... The Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, March 18th in the year 2022. And like I mentioned about a minute a minute ago, here with me today is the former co-host, or I was a co-host on his show uh, when he was the host of Locked On Big Ten, now of Sports Grid. It's been Stevens. We used to have the Stevens and Stevens show. I was first due to alphabetical order. Normally, I would try to put Ben first, but for alphabetical order's sake, my name went first in that show title and we're going to keep that trend going today revive a show that was a lot of fun when it was going on ben stevens welcome back to locked on buckeyes always great to be here jay always great to be a part of the locked on podcast network locked on buckeyes specifically and anytime i can put on the big 10 hat and revive big 10 ben to go through the ncaa tournament all is well in the world so i'm glad to be here I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're back home in your apartment as I see your backdrop now because I do believe last week you had a little fun in Arizona. What went down when you were on the West Coast? A dear friend's bachelor party out in Scottsdale. So we were living it up last weekend throughout conference tournament week. But I can guarantee you, Jay Stevens, that on the TV we had at the house, constant feeds of Indianapolis, Indiana in the Big Ten tournament. So we were staying peeled in to conference tournament week in the month of March to make sure we are ready now for the big dance. So although we had our fun and we enjoyed the outdoors and we got the sunshine of Scottsdale, Arizona, we were still very much tuned in to everything happening throughout conference tourney week so we can be ready for the madness that is March. Basketball on, bachelor party, a little alliteration going on there. I'm not sure how in tuned or tapped into the basketball you can be when you're having a good time with the boys. I mean, it was a little tough. I couldn't go back to like the seven and a half minute of the second half and tell you what happened on a certain possession. But overall game flow result, maybe some of the bigger storylines and narratives out of Indianapolis. We made sure we paid attention to that even through the copious amount of Bud Lights. That's for sure. That's good to hear. What do you think about the Big Ten tournament? Iowa wins it. Purdue in the championship game. Ohio yeah. State gets bounced by Penn State in their first game in that tournament. What do you yeah. think of the tournament overall? I thought Iowa was the team to make a run. I felt that way at the end of the regular season. I even shared out on my Twitter that I believe the Iowa Hawkeyes present the best chance for the Big Ten to make a deep run in the month of March. Why? Because of how much the defense has improved over the final month and a half of this regular season. We know the offense is always going to be good. A top five efficient unit offensively, according to Ken Palm, but the defense has been so good and that remained to be the case in Indianapolis, not the ending of the year Ohio State needed. Losing three of their final four in the regular season, you look to the conference tournament to build that momentum if you go in on a skid. Did not happen for Chris Holtman and company, but a huge time in that conference tournament for Indiana. The two wins over Michigan and Illinois and keeping it very competitive against Iowa had it not been for that Jordan Bohannon three, Indiana's probably not in the first four. They're probably not in that playing game, but it was those first two wins against Michigan and Illinois when nobody really thought the Hoosiers would be able to do it because for the last five years, they haven't in their hunt for a berth into the NCAA tournament, and they did. So that was great to see, great to have IU back into the big dance, and that was a big step, I think, in Indianapolis for Mike Woodson in his first year on campus in Bloomington as well. Woody, as one person on a radio show in, 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 in Indianapolis calls him, Michael Woodson at Indiana. Indiana people, administration, athletic directors, people in that office, they want an Indiana guy. They want somebody, especially that has ties to Bob Knight. Doesn't always work out that way, but that's what a lot of the fans, the boosters want. They got that guy. I know it's only year one for Mike Woodson, but being able to reel in and reel back in, 
your best player in Trace Jackson Davis shortly yeah. after you are hired as the head coach at Indiana, and then for the team to play, and for Mike Woodson to be so hard on Xavier Johnson, as I've heard, Mike Woodson coaches his point guards the hardest, and that's what we've seen from Xavier Johnson of late. I think the Indiana basketball team, I'm not one to, after one year, say they're back. We saw Indiana football have a, an amazing year, and then they were back to what they are at Indiana football. Injuries and things derailed that football season. But for Mike Woodson in Indiana, I personally believe this is a step in the right direction. But one year, Ben, does not mean that this is going to be what fans should expect year after year after year. Yeah, but I think it is a really big step because you think about Indiana and you think about how much of a blue blood they are, probably one of the bluest bloods in all of college basketball, to not be in the big dance in any form or capacity for five years, Jay, is ridiculous when you put that in context of Hoosiers men's basketball. So to get there, to get over that hump, to get that bugaboo off your back is huge for Mike Woodson and the rest of Indiana. And I think you could go back to the offseason and have an understanding of how Mike Woodson is going to run his program. I was skeptical at first of the hire. How would this guy who had no coaching experience in college, who had not been on campus in Bloomington pretty much since he finished his playing days in the early 80s, under Bob Knight, relate to these college kids now? And then you saw everybody in immense amounts hit the transfer portal. What did Mike Woodson do as soon as he got there? He brought everybody back. He convinced Trace Jackson Davis that he wasn't ready for the league, and that's why TJD came back. If you can be that blunt and that honest and earn the respect of your players that quickly, that is huge for the building blocks of a program. So I think Indiana is in very good hands with Mike Woodson and will continue to do so. Also a great coaching staff, a really, really good coaching staff under Mike Woodson in Bloomington, and of course, Dad Mata is a part of that basketball administration. So I think the building blocks are certainly in place for Indiana to hopefully be able to recreate this success in the years to come. Big, you know, Ohio State has one of those guys that is on the fence, I do believe, based off some mock drafts that I've seen lately. E.J. Liddell, everybody knows, it's, he hasn't announced it, but everybody kind of assumes he's going to the NBA next year, probably going to be a lottery pick, has a really good shot to be in that category. But then you have a guy in Malachi Branham who Chris Holtman might have to have a similar conversation that Mike Woodson had with Trace Jackson Davis to reel him back in and say, young man, you're good, but that's a different beast. That's a different animal. One more year at this university will be ideal. Do you think, I don't even know what your opinion is on this. Do you think that Malachi Branham should go to the NBA next year? Or this we've, year. Seen a, we've seen a lot of this in the month of March. I think a lot of it will be dependent on the Buckeyes' run here in the NCAA tournament. Malachi Branham, of course, a member of the Big Ten Conference for Ohio State men's basketball. There was a guy by the name of Malachi Richardson, if you can see the Carrier <laughs> Dome panorama above my head here as well, from my alma mater, Syracuse, on that fantastic run to the Final Four my senior year of college in 2016, where Malachi wasn't really a guy. Maybe on the edge of the first round, early second round, and then he goes on the absolute tear to lead that orange team, really from scoring perspective at the very least, into the Final Four, and then all of a sudden he gets floated in the first round, maybe even a lottery pick. And he left maybe a little bit too early because his NBA career didn't really turn out to be what one would hope of being a first-round draft pick. I think a lot of it will come down to how Malachi Branham performs on behalf of the Buckeyes here in the NCAA tournament. If Ohio State fans want him back, maybe it's not the greatest run in the month of March, but I think they'd rather see team success here now in the big dance. But a lot of that can turn how a player looks to the next level. And we've seen Malachi Branham especially come on so, so strong in the second half of the Big Ten season to show his entire repertoire of scoring, the way he can bring that physicality. It does not look like a freshman at all at times. So I think a lot of that will be dependent on what we've seen the last couple of weeks and what we might see in the coming weeks here in the NCAA tournament. We're here with Ben Stevens from Sports Grid, the host of the morning after. Ben, Branham's going to be huge. No matter if Ohio, if Ohio State is playing Loyola Chicago today, if they advance to probably play Villanova on Sunday, which is who I would have them playing if they win their first round matchup. Malachi Branham needs to be big. Sometimes the bright lights, the stage, traveling, playing in different venues that you've never played in before, having the March Madness emblem on the court, sometimes that's too big for players, not just freshmen. There have been seniors that that stage has been too big for. What are your expectations for the flourishing freshman, as I, as I call him, in this big dance in the game today against the Ramblers? 
It'll be very interesting to see how the entire Ohio State team handles this opening round matchup in the NCAA tournament. Take Loyola out of it, who we know has tons of experience on the other side in an NCAA tournament matchup. But for the Ohio State team last year, and a lot of them back, obviously Dwayne Washington Jr. not there anymore, but a lot of them back from that team last year that was upset by Oral Roberts. If things start to go poorly late in the first half, in that second half, Ohio State goes down. How do they respond? Is it the flashbacks to last year and a little bit of that, ooh, we're starting to sweat a little bit. Let's get make sure we're not tight. Or is it, hey, we've been here before. We know what this is like. Here's how we can excel. Here's how we can succeed. I think that will be the biggest response for Ohio State today. EJ Liddell remembers that game against Oral Roberts last year. Kyle Young remembers that game against Oral Roberts last year. Zed Key remembers that game against Oral Roberts last year. Chris Holtman certainly remembers it. On and on it goes. How do they respond based on that experience? Is it good? Like, hey, let's flip the page. We know what to expect. When we get a little tight, here's how we change that. Or is it, uh-oh, we've been here before. This is not a spot we want to be in. Malachi Brana might provide a fresh perspective for the rest of of the Buckeyes, but that's something I look to, especially in contradiction to this Loyola team that has tons of experience, is one of the most senior-laden teams in the entire country, and they have guys on this team like Lucas Williamson, who were a part of the Final Four run back in 2018 as well, so it will be very interesting to see that dynamic between the two sides. It definitely will, and I do believe you talk about last year, Oral Roberts, uh, Max A. Smith, Kevin O'Banner, that duo there. Those guys were phenomenal. We knew what to expect from A. Smith. We knew that that scoring tandem and duo was amazing. We have seen and we have heard things about Lucas Williamson and how he is a scorer. He could be a guy that could really lead the Ramblers over the Buckeyes, but not just Branham. I hit him on purpose. We were talking about Trace Jackson Davis, Mike Woodson having a reel on back end. Liddell, EJ Liddell, excuse me, does not want this to be his last game in college. No. I don't care what you, what anybody says, like, he's going to the NBA. I don't care. I saw that young man after the loss to Michigan, the look in his eye, that loss meant something. On senior day, where the Buckeyes did something that was interesting, they recognized EJ Liddell on senior day when he's not a senior because it's basically, like I mentioned, assumed he's going to the NBA. Liddell, that is specifically not Branham, I have high hopes for him. I think that this is going to be a stage where he needs to flourish. Part of my hesitation, it's not with Liddell's play and how he is as a player. Ohio State's entry passes have been poor all year long. If you're going to keep throwing the ball at him at the, at the low block or the high post and the passes are going to be bad, that's a recipe for the Ramblers to ramble and to rumble right through to the second round. If the entry pass, simply, it's that easy. If the entry passes get better, and guys move without the basketball. And second that with Justin Arns finally finding a shot. <laughs> that's that could be easily a six to ten point win for Ohio State if the passes get better and Justin Arns gets loose. Yeah, it will be very interesting to see because if there are mistakes on Ohio State's side, Loyola will take advantage. They are an incredibly disciplined defense. They are a top 25 defense, according to the efficiency metrics of Kenneth Pomeroy. They will take advantage of any loose ends Ohio State allows them to take advantage of. And you mentioned Lucas Williamson and his propensity to score. Yes, he's one of the best offensive weapons Loyola has, but he's more so even talented on defense. And that yes. matchup between Lucas Williamson and EJ Liddell, who I expect Drew Ballantyne to put on EJ, will be very, very fascinating. Because we know EJ is going to get his. It's not a matter of, is he going to be shut down? Is he going to finish with six or eight points? Probably not. The guy only scores in double digits. But how does that offense look? What does the scheme look like on the Rambler side in terms of trying to slow down EJ Liddell. And then if EJ is not having the best day, where does the secondary offense come? Is it Justin Arn starting to hit threes? You remember last year, all the guy did was take threes. It's still yeah. the same recipe he has this year, but he was making them at such a clip. Is Kyle Young fully healthy? Is Zed Key fully healthy? Chris Holtman saying on Wednesday, I believe it was, that he was still concerned and that both of those gentlemen would be game time decision. So then does Malachi Branham pick up the slack? What are we going to see out of the rest of this Ohio State team? And that remains to be the question, because I believe that Lucas Williamson, to a certain extent, will be able to slow down EJ Liddell. It's just how prolific can EJ be, even with one of the best defenders, I think, in this tournament, in terms of a single game matchup can be. Ben, let's go back a little bit to something you said earlier about Ohio State and the injuries, or injuries you just talked about here. And it was early. You talked about how Ohio State lost, I think, three of their last four regular season games, four yeah. or five if you could include the loss to Penn State in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. 
Right. That end of season stretch where they played, I don't know the exact number, but there's a lot of games in a short amount of time. My simple brain can, can, can understand and comprehend that. A lot of games in a short amount of time. Do you think their lack of success and their losses at the end of the season were due to either the injuries or the amount of games they played in that short amount of time at the end of the season? I think it's probably a combination of both, right? We saw this for a lot of Big Ten teams at the end of the year, trying to make up most of those conference games where you were playing three games in the final week. We saw that with Nebraska, who obviously had one of those victories over Ohio State on the road. So I think when you don't have a full roster and you don't have your normal time to rest and then maybe work through some of the issues you might see pop up at the end of the season during practice or during a training session, whatever it might be, that is going to rear its head. So I think maybe this small break since the early departure in the Big Ten tournament could be a blessing in disguise for Ohio State. It's the old rest versus rust debate, right? Like, does this help them or do you want to be playing with great momentum into the NCAA tournament? What we know is Ohio State has no momentum right now. So maybe a stop, a pause, a reset is really good for Ohio State. And when it comes from a health perspective, we know that Loyola is going to try to grind out this game. They are going to need Zed Key. They are going to need Kyle Young to be there to match some of that intensity for guys like Schweiger down low for Loyola Chicago, for Ugwak, who is one of the more experienced members of this Ramblers unit. And you're going to need that depth, I think, if you're Chris Holtman and company, to have success because it can't just be all EJ Liddell. That will not be a recipe for success against this disciplined Loyola Chicago team that we know is proven in these kind of scenarios. We're here with Ben Stevens from, from Sports Grid. He is the host of the morning after. You can catch that every mo Monday through Friday, I do believe. You can catch that show. Ben brings the energy, a lot of insight, a lot of notes, and you'll love everything about that as well. Chris Holtman has been under the microscope by numerous Buckeye fans. Numerous Buckeye media members, numerous national media members as well. Chris Holtman has been looked at as a coach that's good, can yep. do some good things, could even put together a top five recruiting class. But for some reason, between his time at Butler and his time at Ohio State, he's only been to the Sweet 16 one time. Now, you might say, Jay, in 2020, during the COVID year, that all, all of a sudden Ohio State may have gone to the Sweet 16 that year. That's true. But that tournament was not played, so we cannot definitively say what happened or what would have happened with that being played. I think Chris Holtman's a good coach. Gene Smith, the AD at Ohio State, does not sound like he plans on firing Chris Holtman after the end of the year. Maybe a contract extension might not come after his contract's up in 2025, but I don't think it doesn't sound like there's going to be a firing at the end of this year. How do you think that how Chris Holtman knows people view him and his experience in the NCAA tournament? How do you think that's impacted his preparation for tonight's game or today's game? I, I think Chris Holtman is a fantastic coach. I do not think he should go anywhere from Columbus. And I think what Chris Holtman has done with the last couple of years groups in Columbus have been very, very good. What he did with last year's team to make them a two seed, I know how it went, but to make them a two seed mm -hmm. in the NCAA tournament was something that I thought was fantastic. A lot of roster changeover, a lot of new pieces trying to figure it all out. And he compiled a group that was really cohesive toward the end of the year. I think you could say the same thing about this year. Yes, some new pieces in place for sure. But when you lose guys like Dwayne Washington Jr. to the NBA, you're going to need to fill those spots. And I think Chris Holtman has done a good job. Ohio State is struggling right now. Chris Holtman is going to have to answer for why have the late season struggles happened. Why, although Ohio State made the Big Ten tournament title game last year, why why they lost four or five this year. And if they get bounced today by Loyola Chicago, what exactly does Chris Holtman need to do to take that next step? But across the Big Ten, Jay, we have seen restructuring of contracts to make a lower buyout if necessary and to pay a coach less money, hopefully for incentivizing a return to better. A, an idea of, listen, we need to restructure how things are working here. We need a plan in place to get us to the place we need to be because something, whatever it is, might not be working. So it's the level of expectation that Gene Smith wants to set. I do believe Chris Holtman is the guy to do that. I think Chris Holtman is one of the brightest young coaches, still a young coach in all of college basketball. So I think that Chris Holtman is the right man for the job. It's just a matter of if this does not go Ohio State's way here now in the NCAA tournament, why has it not gone that way? And what can Chris Holtman in place do to fix it? I don't believe the answer is somewhere else at the moment. I believe Chris Holtman is the guy to lead the Buckeyes on that path. If, again, if, because today is game day, if things do not go well against the Ramblers.
is this game that's going to be played today at 12.15 Eastern time on CBS? I first want to say, this is a phenomenal way to start the day. I mean, your first game of the day on CBS, America's most watched network, is these two teams, a team in the Ramblers that is a mid-major, but everybody knows who they are. And then a team in Ohio State has a lottery pick and another guy who's possibly going to be a lottery pick if he stays in, the, stays in school next year in Malachi Brandon. You have a phenomenal coach in Chris Holtman. A lot of yep. good pieces on this team. I mean, this is a phenomenal way to start the day. Great job by CBS Turner and everybody involved on putting this to start today on Friday. Injuries have hurt this team. We talked about it all year long. At the time of this recording, as Ben stated, we don't know the status of if Zed Key or Kyle Young will play. We're not sure about that right now. I think that Kyle Young is simply going to be the X factor. If he plays, W. If he does not, L. To me, it's that simple. We saw what his absence meant last year in the NCAA tournament against Oral Roberts. I think Ohio State beats Oral Roberts by at least five points if Kyle Young's on the court. To me, it's that mm -hmm. simple. But is it that simple to you? Kyle Young, the X Factor, plays W for Ohio State, not playing an L. I don't know if it's simply Kyle Young, but I agree with the premise, right? That that depth against this experienced Loyola Chicago team, if they don't have Kyle Young and more of that then becomes on the shoulders of an EJ Liddell, even if Zed Key is there, that that focuses a lot more attention on those two guys to make sure they perform at the highest of their abilities where Kyle Young would take some of that slack away. Then are you trusting Joey Brunk, who has been fantastic yes. in absences this year, but is that going to be the piece that you need? We know what Loyola Chicago is going to do. We know Ohio State at times can play at a slower pace as well. Loyola is in the bottom 50 slowest teams in all of college basketball, but they are efficient, a top 10 effective field goal percentage, and they can get around the rim. They are a great three-point shooting team and a great team near the bucket as well, a top 15 two-point field goal percentage as well, Jay. So Kyle Young knows that. Kyle Young is the quarterback of sorts, and Kyle Young can lead that at times to have an understanding of how to try to slow down what Loyola is going to do because they will play slow, but they are efficient. So you need that depth to counteract that on that side for Ohio State. So, yes, I believe that depth will be a huge thing here. If Kyle Young is out, if Zed Key is out, and neither guy can play at that game-time decision level, I do not think that bodes well for the Buckeyes. Ben, this revitalization of the Stevens and Stevens show has been fun. Hopefully we can do this again between now and the start of the football season. Ooh. But Ben, we're almost wrapped up with this show. Time flies so much when you and I are having fun behind the mic. Who do you have winning today? I believe, sadly, Buckeye Nation, I'm just being honest here, I believe Loyola Chicago will pull off the slight upset, although the betting odds have this even. Even mm -hmm. on the money line on both sides, I believe Loyola Chicago, based on seed line at least, will advance in the NCAA tournament to take on Villanova. And Jay, you know that my show comes from a sports betting perspective. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, I expect this game to be an under of a total around 132, 132 and a half. It's a number I have targeted with Loyola Chicago all year because away from home, either in road games or neutral floor games, a majority, and I mean a good majority of the time, Loyola Chicago hits the under. And if they are going to win this game, I think it comes from that style of play of slightly slowing down EJ Liddell and maybe not having that balance across the rest of Ohio State's offense. So I believe in a close game and what I expect to be a good game to get the game started on the round of 64 on Friday, I believe it will be Loyola Chicago winning narrowly over Ohio State. Ben, a little bit more betting advice for the entire tournament. I know it's coming out on a Friday. But there's a lot of tournament that's left to be played. Sure. Would you, over under total points, for most games, are you probably leaning majority over, majority under, or if you're getting betting advice to people that are listening to the show? I think the biggest thing when it comes to totals, you can't really put it blanket over, under. You have to look at the two teams, and you have to understand, I think, tempo more than anything. You might look at a team and be like, oh, they have a great offense. They're going to score a ton. It's going to be an over. Or this team loves to play a defensive, gritty style. It's going to be an under. That might be the case, but that might be the case as you take that extra step of understanding the tempo of those teams. Gonzaga plays with a very efficient pace, but at a very high tempo. That is also the case for a team like South Dakota State, who played against Providence yesterday. But when you look at other teams, like Villanova, still a great offense and can score, but a bottom 10 slowest tempo in all of college basketball. That's why their totals are a little bit lower. Always look at the pace and the tempo for the two teams matching up before you handicap a total.
a little added information that was not planned, but it's impromptu, and that's what we love with the Stevens and Stevens show, just going with the flow. Ben Stevens, I like reviving shows. I want to keep this going a few times a year. But in the meantime, where can people find you on Twitter if they're listening, can't see us on YouTube, and maybe they want to follow along with you for some betting advice and for your interesting little flavorful Big Ten tweets? Absolutely. Always keeping the Big Ten tweets going on Twitter at Ben Scott Stevens. Scott with two T's there. S-T-E-V-E-N-S, not the P-H like my friend Jay here. And then every weekday, as Jay said, Sirius XM Channel 159 all across the Sports Grid Network in places I don't even know how to describe. YouTube, YouTube TV, various affiliates all over the place. It's the morning after on Sports Grid, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern each and every Monday through Friday throughout the week. So we'll have you locked throughout the NCAA tournament. We will have some fun, not only with the futures market and making sure we can keep our brackets from not being busted, but move through the final four. But also, Jay, remember, single game profitability is always huge in the big dance as well. Ooh, I forgot something. Guys, you can follow me on Twitter Please. as well, at jsteven07. Got a couple seconds left. Who is your final four, Ben? And who My final four... All? is this, my final four. So out of the West region, I believe it will be Texas Tech. Out of the South, I think it is Arizona. From the Midwest, I'm debating it still. I haven't finalized the bracket. It will be either Iowa or Auburn for the purposes of being on a Big Ten podcast. I will say Iowa. And then in the East region, I believe it will be Kentucky, Arizona, and Kentucky in the national championship game. In a battle of Wildcats, it goes to the team from Tucson. I believe Arizona will be the national champion, cutting down the nets in early April in New Orleans. I want to give mine very quickly. I didn't even plan on doing this, but it's perfect time. I think that I don't even know the regions right now. Duke, Duke wins the West region. Mm. I got Baylor. I think the Baylor's going to ride high with the way that they played this year, winning the East region. Arizona from the South, they've been a team that I have not watched enough basketball of due to where they are in the country. But everything I've heard, everything I've seen, has been that they're a phenomenal <laughs> basketball team. And then Kansas in the Midwest. I have Duke in Arizona in the national championship. And unfortunately, the ending that the final North Carolina Duke game has for Coach K is going to be the ending that this game will have as well. I have Arizona, the Wildcats. Ben and I are on the same page with this one. Arizona winning the national championship this year. Guys, this is a fun revitalization of the show. Stevens and Stevens, I hope you enjoyed it. Ben will be back. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back on Monday recapping the weekend that was in Ohio State basketball, maybe some football news as well. And I hope, I hope the Buckeyes win today. I hope the Buckeyes win Sunday because it makes my job a whole lot more fun when I'm talking about wins and not losses.